Hello fellow Amiga users, I'm Bill. I'm Anthony. And we are the Guru Meditation. Come with us today when we explore one of the all-time classic pieces of Amiga hardware. New Text Digiview. Boom. Oh man, Anthony, Digiview is one of my all-time favorite pieces of Amiga gear, and I'm so psyched for today's episode. Yeah, I know. You dragged me all the way here to your parents' house to shoot this episode. We, had the, we got the basement tricked out. We got a huge setup here, which we're going to take you guys through in just a minute. But just so you know, like, for those of you that aren't familiar with Digiview, it's a video digitizer. It actually uses a video signal to scan a still image, and it uses some like funky trickery to, to okay. do that. And New Tech was a company started in 1985 by Tim Jennison. 1986, Digiview and DigiPaint hit the scene for the Amiga. And what made this so amazing was it actually put in the hands of the consumer the ability to digitize photorealistic color images for the first time. I'll never forget when I first saw like, the New Tech demo reel. It was like this, this legendary classic uh, demo that was on two floppy disks. And I saw like the, the images, they just looked so photorealistic. It just it blew my mind. It was just amazing. This is something that you never saw before on a home computer. And like the ability to create these images is something that like just got to me. And it was something that inspired me and got me into the Amiga. Right, I think it got a lot of people into the Amiga because I don't think you could own an Amiga and be into the Amiga and not have seen images that came from this setup. And believe it or not, NewTek has got a long history in, uh, in the Amiga world and it's also still a company that's still Strong around business. today. They came out with the legendary you know, NewTek Video Toaster, which is probably like the all-time most popular piece of hardware for right. the Amiga. Basically gave you a, a TV switcher for an extremely low price built around the Amiga 2000. And today they have something called the NewTek TriCaster, and it's basically like a modern video toaster. It does live switching, it does live streaming, it's an awesome piece of gear. I actually went down to Able CineTech in New York and got a demo from the NewTek people. It was awesome. It was like really exciting to see a company with its roots in Amiga still alive and well today. So I used to use Digiview to scan images for our Westchester Amiga user group newsletter. I used to use them to scan images for like reports at school. I would like bring my Amiga into school and I'd have uh, a little slideshow set up and just knock people's socks off. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> right. So now of course Digiview itself is this box and the software that ran on the Amiga. And this being the original for the Amiga 1000, and this is Digiview Gold. It came out in 1989 uh, for, it was the next generation Digiview. It's a little box and it connects to the Amiga's parallel port. So it's got a parallel uh, a port jack on one side and it's got a composite video jack on the other side that you connect your black and white video camera to. Color from a black and white camera? Color cameras actually weren't that popular and not that many people had them. Also, the resolution of black and white cameras and the image quality is like technically a little bit better than color cameras at that time. So that's why New Tech decided to package uh, their product with a black and white camera. You can see it here. We've got a Panasonic TV camera, we've got a color wheel, and we have a copy stand. Right, and the copy stand would be a standard piece of photographic equipment. This would be used by people taking pictures of product for catalogs. It's basically because these cameras were not known for their low light capabilities. So you needed bright, even lighting, and this is what gave you that. A lot of these cameras that came packaged with it, like this Panasonic, were actually like security cameras. But the image quality on them is great. Trick is, how do you get color out of a black and white camera? And that's this sucker right here, this little color wheel. It's got a gelatin filter for red, green, and blue. So basically, those are the three colors that make up the NTSC video signal. So it does three scans, a scan for the red channel, a scan for the blue channel, and a scan for the green channel. It takes all three scans, puts them together, and boom, you've got a color right. image. And what the color wheel does basically is filter out the other colors. So when you have it on green, you're getting a green image to the camera, which is black and white. But then, as, since the PC knows that that's green, it can extrapolate this is the green information, this is the red information, this is the blue information, put it all together and you got your color image. All right, so here's a closer look at the whole setup. This is the Panasonic black and white video camera. This is one of the standard ones that came with Digiview. Uh, you can see up here, it's got a composite video output. That's going to our 1084S monitor. We'll take a look at that in a second. Coming down a little bit lower, we have the color wheel. Uh, like I said before, you have to scan the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. Uh, but if you notice, if you look closely, you can see 
is attached with this little motor. And now this motor did not come stock with Digiview. Right, stock with Digiview, you would have had a simple piece that attached to the camera with a holder for the wheel and you would turn it manually with your hand. But little Digidroid, he turns it for you. So you hit automatic, as you'll see in a second, and he just automatically turns the wheel and scans the red, green, right. and blue channels for you. And that's signaled from the Amiga over this cable. And it plugs into the joystick port on the back of the Amiga. It's pretty amazing, actually. Uh, and then down here, we have the subject of what we're scanning. Today, we are going to scan a, an issue of Amiga World. We're going to scan the cover. And it's the Super Color Graphics Edition. Right, so, very fitting for a color digitizer. Exactly. So, like I said, up here we have the composite video output. And the first place you want to uh, connect it to is actually not the Digiview. You want to connect, connect it to the back of your monitor. Right. And why would you want to, why do you have to do that? Well, the reason for that is because you need to frame up the shot, as you'll see in a second. You need to set the size, set your cropping, and set your focus. And uh, Digiview would actually have to do a scan in order for you to see any image at all. So if you need to do a scan and adjust the focus, do another scan and adjust the focus, you'd be there till kingdom come. So this is just a much faster and more efficient way to line up your shot before doing the actual scan. All right, Anthony, so let's get into it. Let's do an actual scan right now. So like I said, step one is connecting the camera to your CRT monitor and uh, lining up the shot. So, so here we have it. And as you can see, a little bit out of focus. Yeah, it needs a lot of work. <laughs> we can't see much of the magazine at all. It's out of focus. So first step is to adjust the camera. First thing, if we want to zoom out, this uh, camera comes with a prime lens. So we zoom manually. We zoom by moving the camera further away from our subject. Right, and that's the whole reason for the copy stand with this arm holding the camera. You can raise it and lower it on this bar to get it further away or closer to your subject. And as you can see, this lens is not very wide, so we're not going to be able to get the entire cover, but that's okay. We will adjust the frame and still get something cool. If we wanted the entire cover, we'd have to put a wide-angle lens on it or a zoom lens. Um, for now, this is the stock lens. It's a 25 millimeter lens, and we'll just do the best we can with the stock. Uh, so let's slide the magazine over and let's find like a good frame. So I think we obviously we want to get like the title of the magazine, right? right. We want to get Amiga World in there and I think something that says super color could be cool. It looks like we'll get all this to fit. Uh, we'll focus it up. Now Amiga World of course was one of the big American Amiga magazines of the day. We're going to scan at 320 by 200 resolution and this is probably over scan. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how the cropping works out. But this is this is a really good place to start and we can do a scan and see how it falls into place. Now, interesting thing that I learned about this camera recently. Now, the image is like, it's a little bit dark on there, and I wish it was a little bit brighter. Thing is, you got manual focus, you don't have manual exposure on this camera, which is like good for like 90% of the people out there, but bad if you're a professional photographer. Like, I would love to open up the iris a little bit here. And I do have another lens that has an iris on it, this one doesn't. But the problem is the camera is going to compensate internally for, for my exposure change. So if I brighten it up, the camera is automatically going to close it down internally by adjusting the sensitivity of the camera. Right, uh, because as mentioned before, a lot of these were security cameras. They were designed to be placed on a building somewhere, not touched. They had to work in daytime, nighttime, cloudiness. So you needed that auto exposure. Right, and you can adjust that in the Digiview software, as you'll see, or you can bring it into another program, which is what I used to do. I used to scan it, get like a, a quote raw image, and then bring it into AdPro and you know manipulate it to my heart's content. The thing is, it's better to do it in the camera because you get less noise when you start manipulating brightness and contrast on the computer. You're doing it digitally, so it introduces more noise and more artifacts, but the auto exposure does get you pretty close, so it, it won't be too noticeable. And we're working in 320 by 200. So. <laughs> I don't think it'll be a problem. <laughs> All right, so it's time now to uh, switch over to RGB mode on our monitor and fire up the Digiview. All right, let's do it. Booyah. Uh, we have the black and white camera hooked up to our 1084S monitor via composite video so we could line up the shot. Now it's time to unplug that composite cable and plug it into the back of Digiview. So I'm going to go around the back here. I'm going to unplug our video cable, hand it over to you, and into Digiview we go. So here we are, Workbench 1.3, Digiview 4.0. And anyone from this era would recognize that blue and orange. The blue and orange just is amazing. Now if you look here, uh, it doesn't come with only the Digiview program. 
You also have some sample images. You have DynaShow, which is the image viewing program. Uh, it has a really cool mode in, in the, the newer versions of Digiview. Digiview 4.0 has something called dynamic high res. It allows you to have ham mode, 4096 colors, in high res. So here we have our Digiview splash screen. Uh, as you can see, it's a very, very simple setup. You can choose your resolution. You've got high res, interlaced, horizontal overscan, vertical overscan, and color. You can turn color on or off. If you want to do a black and white scan, off. We want to do 4096 color ham mode, so we're going to keep the color on. And we're going to keep it at the classic 320 by 200. Hit OK. And here we are, Digiview 4.0. It's a very, very simple interface, which I really like. It's, it's powerful. It gives you all the tools that you need. But at the same time, it's simple. Right. It's a program that gets out of your way. So it's got project, digitize, and controls. Uh, the project menu is just a basic menu, like standard, make a new file, load a file, save an image, save it as an RGB file. You can load a palette. So if you're trying to match the palette to a previous scan that you did, you can load the palette from that image. Right, because these scans are not fast, so if you were scanning a whole bunch of, of items to do an animation, you may be doing this over a span of a few days, and you don't therefore have to leave your Amiga on the whole time. And now here we're dealing with only 4,096 colors. In modern times, it kind of doesn't matter what the palette is. We're working at 16 million colors. But back then, when you were limited to like 16 colors, 32 colors, 4,096 colors, and you were doing an animation, you wanted to make sure that all your frames use the same palette, otherwise you would get this weird color shifting in between frames. So that's why you can save a palette for a picture. Um, print is just standard, you know, print it out on your, uh, on your inkjet printer, your dot matrix. <laughs> Workbench takes you back to Workbench. Uh, the histogram is very interesting. It shows you your exposure levels. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, screen size just takes you back to the main splash screen where you can decide what you want your resolution to be. The digitize menu, you got your red, your green, your blue, and your auto. Red, green, and blue would be if you didn't have the Digidroid, you would hit each of those, turn the wheel between each, and get your three scans. We're going to do auto, and we're going to watch Digidroid do his magic in a second. Controls menu, also very simple. Uh, first, we'll go to uh, the motor calibration, which will calibrate the Digiview, because the Amiga doesn't know exactly like the orientation of the wheel. It doesn't know which color it's at. And of course, this is something you only need to do if you're using Digidroid. Exactly. This is only for Digidroid, and you only need to do it once, as long as you don't actually like spin the color wheel on the droid, which is hard to do because you have to take it apart. Anyway, first we go to red, and we line up the red with the lens. So it's dead center on that gelatin filter, because you don't want the edges to creep into frame, because it will be a dark and out of focus line on the right. edge of your Right, it gets inch. more and more important to be centered as you use a wider angle lens. Very true. We go to green. That looks pretty good to me. And we go to blue. Nailed it. Perfect. Awesome. All right, our droid is calibrated. Now let's just take a peek at some of our other control menus. We'll go to control. And in this menu, you can see you can choose how many colors you want. You can choose the dithering. So you got line art if you're going to scan uh, like clip art, like I used to do for our Westchester Amiga user group newsletter. I used to put it in line mode, and it just has black and white, like literally, like color zero and white. <laughs> black and white is standard black and white image, 16 colors, 32. Half bright, 4096 ham mode. And then you got your dynamic high res, which was a special mode that New Tech came up with that allowed you to have 4096 colors in high res. And that, that was just gorgeous. For now, we're sticking with the classic 4096 color ham mode. You can adjust your dithering. You can turn off your dithering, or you can uh, use number one, which is like medium dithering, or you can use two, which is the most dithering. Now, dithering is a way of blending the colors together. So the transition between one color and another is smooth, and it kind of gives you the illusion of having more colors and a smoother transition uh, between similar colors. Uh, dithering is a good idea to use. You'll see a good example of dithering in our ham video. So if you're interested in that, go check out our, our ham video. It's uh, <laughs> You see us use some Floyd Steinberg. Oh, yes. We love the Floyd. Here you can do a positive scan or a negative scan. Obviously, we want positive. And then you have all these different controls. You can adjust the brightness, the contrast, saturation, and individual saturation of the red, green, and blue channel. You can increase the sharpness. And then you got your noise reduction. As I said before, like as you manipulate the image digitally, like when you increase the brightness or the contrast, sometimes you get increased noise. 
and when that happens, you can just kick up your noise reduction. But we're just going to keep everything all natural right now, start with everything in the center. It gives us a baseline. Right now, a lot of these options you would also have in other applications that you could take the image into later as a post process, like Ad Pro or your paint program. But the idea here is to give you everything you need because you might not necessarily have another program to take your image into. So give you basic stuff that you could make a really good quality image right out of the, right out of the box. And now another option that you want to look at before you do your first scan is the camera menu. You, there's different modes of capturing. You got your fast scan, you got your normal scan, and your slow scan, which they recommend for a color camera. For now, we're just going to stick normal because slow is really slow, and we'd have to like time lapse this <laughs> in order to like not have you guys be completely bored. Uh, you can change the size. We want full size. Uh, okay, sounds groovy. Time to do the scan and digitize auto. It's the DigiDroid show, and we'll uh, we'll watch we'll the step Amiga. Step back, let the droid do its work. Yeah, and we watch the show. There we go. Starting with red. There goes the red channel. Now, we take for granted, like, snapping a picture with our phones today. <laughs> right, instantaneous. I mean, in the time this takes, you could have the picture up on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, Twitter, uh, YouTube, everything. It's magical just being able to do this. So <laughs> I think we had a lot more patience back then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so there it is. That's the blue channel. And now it's going to put the red, the green, and the blue scans together. And look at that. Voila. A beautiful color image. Uh, hey, that looks it looks pretty darn good. Now you can see some ham fringing here on the diagonal lines. It's uh, you know one of the downsides to ham mode, but you know the flip side is you have this amazing photorealistic image. Right. I mean, just look at all the different color variations in that rainbow. So we've got our scan. If you want to monkey around with it a little bit and see what we got. We can go over here to our histograms, which I mentioned before. Now, this is getting into some more hardcore photography stuff. Right, and this is basically an analysis tool. Exactly. So we go to histogram, and we have a histogram for our red channel, our green channel, and our blue channel. We'll take a look at red. And as you can see, we have a graph here. And this is, this is a really, really important tool. I use this all the time, even in video, to get an idea of exposure. So if you look uh, here, we have a y-axis and an x-axis. Now, the x-axis shows you your exposure range. So all the way on the left is black, all the way on the right is white, and in the middle is our midtones, our grays. The y-axis shows you how much of that you have. So down here, it, it, like this is our blacks, and it shows us we have like quite a few blacks. You go into the middle, and we don't have like that many midtones. And then you go towards the brights, and we have quite a few brights. And that's probably like the white in the Amiga logo. So that's probably what we're seeing here. And then we have nothing that's pure white. So this is something I would, it's really, really close, but it's something I would adjust like in Ad Pro or here in Digiview. I'd probably just brighten it up a little bit because we want something that's close to pure white. We don't want to clip it, but I would like to see it like a little bit more over here. But let's say we want to brighten it up a little bit. Let's see what happens just, just for an experiment. We can go over to our control. Let's just turn the brightness like way up. Just to show you like what happens to the histogram. We'll turn it way up. Oh, it definitely looks bright. Oh, yeah. And as you can see, like, it's, it's way overexposed now. That's what we call overexposure. So let's go see what this bright image looks like on our histogram. We'll just go back to the red channel since that's what we were looking at before. So we have a point of reference. And here, our raw data is exactly the same. But right, because what comes from the camera is not going to change. Right. So but here's our adjusted data, which we kicked out the brightness. And as you can see, there's, like, there's nothing in the yeah. dark. There's no black anymore. <laughs> there's no black. It's just mid grays all the way up to the whites. So that gives you an idea of what your exposure is. If you don't have your monitor properly calibrated, you know, using the histogram is a really great tool to make sure you have a perfect right, exposure. Right, because here you're looking at the actual data. You're not looking at your monitor, which, you know, you, you know, on old CRTs, you have the contrast, you have the brightness dials, Turn you it have down the color and, dial. And oh, look, it's not, bri it's not right. too bright anymore. It, it's <laughs> Actually, just it's it amazing. They give you all these tools that you can use right in this program to analyze your scan and get your scan as good as you can. I just remember I used to have this DigiView set up like right over there, like literally right there, and my Amiga was right there where that VCR is. I remember is. it. And we, I spent so many hours using DigiView back then, scanning clip art, scanning images for my book reports. It was just, ah, this brings back so many great memories. So those are the basics of DigiView. Classic system, always a pleasure to bust it out, see the droid in action. But you might have noticed there's another little box that's just been sitting here yeah, the whole time. staring at us. And what is this? What is this little gadget? This is the Sunrise Industries Color Splitter. 
Now what this is designed to do is to allow you to hook up a color video source to DigiView and grab it. Right, and being that that's color already, this box takes the place of this wheel. And you're, it's really designed to like, connect a color camera to DigiView. But I am sure down here we can find something else. Yeah, the color camera would be cool, but you know what? I think there's something a little bit more interesting. When I was a kid, I always tried to like use a VHS player, connect a VHS player to this, hit pause, try and scan it. Problem is... We all know how pause was on VHS. Very jumpy. If there was any movement on the screen, it would always flick back and forth. And you would just get a really, really bad right. scan. It, was just, it looked awful. However, we do have some other 90s technology down here, laser discs. And laser discs came out, and, and the big thing that it touted was the ability to freeze frame yeah, very th stably. They had two different types of laser discs. They had CAV, which stands for constant angular velocity, and CLV, which stands for constant linear velocity. Now, if you had a CAV disc, like each frame is one rotation of the disc. So you hit pause, the laser just parks itself right there, the disc keeps spinning, and you have a perfect freeze frame. So I'm hoping that this box will allow us to capture something from LaserDisc. All right, we're here in the garage. It is a garage filled with retro. I've got retro everywhere. I've got monitors over there, VHS tapes. You name it, we got it. And over here, we have a tower of retro. We got some plastic trains. We've got a mini DV and super VHS dual deck. Here's our laser displayer. This is the sucker we're gonna bust out. Uh, just for shits and giggles, here we have an Adcom preamp. We got DVD player, another DVD player, a third DVD player. Under that, we have an old school Adcom D to A converter. And then we got more DVD players. We got amplifiers. So this is just like a tower of retro. It's a Tetris of retro. First, we take down the plastic bill. Super, oh man, this stuff is just fused together. That's been, it's been there a it's long been, time. It's been there a while. All right, let's go in. Here we go. All right, so we got the laser disc player all set up. We got the color splitter ready to go. Uh, first things first, you know, it's very similar to our other method where we connected the camera directly to the 1084S so we could line up the shot. Now we've got the laser disc connected directly to the 1084S so Make we can- Make sure we can actually, the player works. Yeah, so we can queue up the actual because frame that we want. we know where this came from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking about like, what, what should we digitize? So I came up with a really, really special one. This is the best quality version of the original Star Wars trilogy that you can get because... Wait, now there's one that'll give it a run for its money. What's that? If you own the CD32 with full motion video cartridge, you can get this on video CD. Okay, well, that would be an interesting comparison. LaserDisc versus VCD. <laughs> I don't think the quality is going to be as good. I don't think so either. Uncompressed, <laughs> uncompressed analog video is, is pretty sweet. So before George Lucas went and manipulated all the images... Ruined. And added, yeah, ruined it, added all the CG. This is the original way it was seen in the theaters back in 1977. We'll cue something up here that's really, really nice. Let's go to, let's go to Tatooine. Yeah, here's a scene when Luke is uh, getting the droids. Yeah, we're purchasing the droids from the Jawas. This R2's got a bad motivator. All right, well, it's not the most beautiful yeah, frame in the enough. world, but yeah, it's good enough. So, um, all right, so now what we're going to do, just like we did before, we're going to disconnect the laser disc player from the monitor and connect it to the DigiView. We got the composite video out coming out of the laser disc player going into the color splitter. Then we got the output of the color splitter going into the DigiView. Now the color splitter, as you can see, it's got a switch here, red, green, and blue. So it's going to act very much like you said, like the Basically color wheel. It's like a color wheel. It also has two other adjustments. It's got one for, for saturation and one for hue. So, you know, if your colors are looking a little bit desaturated, you can turn it up, or a little oversaturated, turn it down. Hue is, you know, if it's a little bit green or a little bit magenta, you can adjust for it. For now, we'll keep everything in the middle and see how it does. And here we are back in DigiView. We go into the uh, digitize menu. Yeah, and of course, you're going to want to match the color you're digitizing with the, the three positions on the switch here. Exactly. So, so, so no auto this time because right. we, know, we, we no longer have, have our friend. Yeah, our friend, our friend can't help us here. <laughs> so we're going to start with red and the make sure the switch is in the red position. And, uh, and, and off we go. Here it comes. Now, you might be wondering why it's a rectangle. This is a letterbox laser <laughs> disc, yes. So now once this pass is done, we'll switch the box to green and we'll have DigiView do the green pass. And last but not least, we go blue. 
Now it's got all three passes scanned and uh, it's in RAM. It's basically like a frame buffer in RAM. So because we didn't use auto, it doesn't automatically show us the color version. So we have to go down to control and display and it'll render the color version. Here it comes, it's exciting. Not, you know, not, not too bad. <laughs> There's some, uh, some definitely some, uh, some ham fringing happening here. Oh, you're, uh, I yeah. mean, of course, you know, digitizing uh, something into ham, of course you can have ham. Ham fringing, fringing. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you know, it's, it's not a bad first pass. All right, Anthony, well, that, that about wraps it up, guys. Right. Yeah, hope you enjoyed our uh, little DigiView demonstration here. I had, I had a lot of fun. Uh, me too. This has been great. Like I said, I didn't really use it as much as you did back in the day. It was great to just see how it worked, how it worked with the DigiDroid again. I, I mean, we had used it before. This is kind of like a part one. This is like DigiView part one, because I've got, I've got plans for this baby. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag well, yet. <laughs> I mean, the idea here is to now take this older technology and use it to make some new artwork. So guys, please stay tuned to the Guru Meditation. We've got some really, really fun stuff coming up. We really appreciate all the support. We're just like overwhelmed by all your positivity and all your comments. It's just we really enjoy doing this channel and hanging out and talking to you guys. So feel free to you know leave any comments, chat with us. We love answering the comments. Subscribe. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see future episodes of the Guru. We got some really fun stuff planned. We, there's a whole garage of vintage of vintage hardware there that I'm going to pull out and use. And obviously we know Dust Bunker's got Dust a ton. Bunker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we've got a lot of old hardware right. to do. We want to do some, some modern stuff with the Amiga 2. So it's just really exciting. There's so much to do. And this is why we'll see you on the next episode of the Guru Meditation.